Hey everybody, welcome back to the JRM YouTube channel. I'm Jake, that's Ryan, and today we're gonna to talk about fiber optics. We've been getting a lot of questions down in the comment section below as well on Twitter and Facebook asking us how this stuff works. And today we're gonna to take a deep dive and sit down together and explore how we use fiber in our solutions. Yeah, so this is gonna be kind of a two-part series. Part one, uh, first half of the video is gonna be just talking about what is fiber in general. So if you do know about fiber, then you can kind of skip ahead to the second part where we talk about how we use it in our applications day to day for TV and video broadcasting. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we use fiber quite a lot here in our solutions, but let's talk about what fiber is for a quick second. So fiber are these little tiny strands of glass that are inside of a cable. Um, there could be millions, hundreds, depending on what type of fiber you use, these little strands pass light from one side to the other to use data from where you're traveling to. So let's take a quick look at some of the cables that we have. So this and this right here are both LC connectors where they are in single mode and multi-mode respectively. These cables tend to be used for patching things for gigabit ethernet, video, multimedia, and then one other cable over here. I have seen this in audio, but its actual uh, purpose is, uh, they're SC fibers. Their actual purpose is for like test equipment, cat V, and why people might like this more is because it has a snap-on feature where you can snap it in uh, versus the LC fiber. And this can also be single mode and multi-mode, but um, that's a little bit about what fiber is, but we got one more that we wanna show you too. So the main fiber that we use here at JRM, and you've probably seen it in a few of our videos, it is our big trunk cable, which we plug into the side of the van or the trailer of every production we're at. And this is on a big 800 foot spool, and it's a military grade armored cable, which means it is wrapped in metal on the inside so anyone can drive over it. You can even try to cut it with scissors and it actually won't cut. But the difference, the connection type of this is there's actually, you're not gonna be able to see it here, but there's tiny little dots on the inside and there's 12 little dots, and each one of those little dots is a fiber optic cable inside here. So there's, this is called a MTP cable, and there's 12 fibers inside of this one connection. And um, it just plugs in and carries all of our data back and forth from where we're at inside of a venue. Uh, cameras, audio, internet, everything back and forth. And the way that it does that are through these converters, which are called cassettes. And at the end of this cassette is where that trunk MTP cable plugs in and it locks in and at the front it basically it's basically a converter it's 12 on a big connection and then you get 12 LC connections which Ryan just told you about which are these um, this is an individual one the LC simplex versus LC duplex and the du duplex will just plug in to these 1 through 12 up here so we get 12 channels of fiber that send back and forth from the press box to our vehicle for broadcasting. And beyond those 12, you can actually send multi, multiple different signals across one fiber. And the way that happens is through SFP cards. And these SFP cards are basically what make fiber happen in the devices um, that they're associated with. So even with one fiber, you can actually still send multiple signals across one fiber, such as one LC, and the way that happens is through different colored lasers. And the way, basically what that happens is an SFP slot, which are these metal adapters that come out of the devices that we use, which Ryan will tell you about here in a little bit. But these SFP cards are basically where the light turn, where the data gets converted to a laser, and you can kind of swap these out on most devices and for instance, this one from factory had two LCs, meaning it had two dual simplex where you plugged in both of these. And we didn't want that taking up two fibers on our cassette. So we bought these SFPs that convert that light to separate color spectrums. So let's say a red laser and a green laser. Now that way it can send data across one LC versus two of them. And that opens up another fiber for us. So as I'm holding one of the devices, Ryan's going to tell you about more. Ryan's going to tell you more about what devices we use here at JRM on day-to-day -day basis. So when we're looking at these fiber options here, Jake makes a really good point about the lasers themselves. So 
the, at the rate of which these things travel over the light are immensely fast. So you could have multiple different types of fibers here doing completely different things over one glass strand because of how these lasers kind of like come into existence. So there's a lot of different transmitters and receivers that we have, uh, like this one over here. Uh, because of how things like HDMI works, you do actually need these two LCs on here because there's handshakes done with digital video like that. And then when you're looking with something like the fiber optic, which Jake was just showing you for the uh, SDI, you can uh, convert that down to one because now we're just sending video over. But with all these different light styles, now you can see that we have the more uh, complex one here for fiber over ethernets where our ethernet can transmit over fiber. But what makes these really interesting is when you're starting to look at the more complicated ones where you have multiple different lasers shooting down one LC fiber. Um, and that, that opens up a whole bunch of different things because sometimes you can be limited by the main cable, in our case it's the MT, uh, MTP trunk cable where we're limited to 12 and now when we shoot down more lasers down the funnel here we can turn one of these into four cameras so it, uh, fiber works in really really interesting ways and the ways that we put it to use here is quite amazing but we got a little bit more I want to show you with audio as well yeah so with fiber and Ryan made a really good point to all of that basically we can go through some more devices that we use here and the, the one thing, anytime we have a problem, not even a problem, when we want to send something across fiber, I just do a straight Google search, like, let me see if there's an XLR to fiber, and there's a high chance that there is. Uh, fiber is basically, a, it's a new technology within the last five to ten years, I'd say, and every, every month something new is coming out in the fiber world. So, for instance, uh, when we first got started with fiber, Basically, we needed a way to send audio back to our announcers in the booth so they could hear myself on intercoms and hear themselves talk back. So I just did a Google search for fiber optic over XLR, and this was one of the options we had. And this was uh, the lockable connection SFP fiber. And the way, basically, all of these devices kind of come in pairs. You always have one in your area that you want to either send or receive data and then one in the opposite that in the trailer, for instance, where you want to send and receive data. It's just where you, what, what direction you need to receive or send. Um, so this is an XLR over fiber, just a single XLR over a single SMP fiber. Um, and a lot of these devices are really kind of smart in the end where you could be in the trailer and say, oh, let me see if the fiber is linked. And if there's a little light that says F and the light will be blinking in the same sequence that this receiver is sending so then you can kind of know that both are linked up so fiber is kind of straight one-to-one -one connections and it's really easy to use and a couple other devices that we use these are our black magic atems and this is kind of what got us started with fiber optics and these little boxes uh do everything they send cam camera um, video either hdmi or sdi they can send audio they send talk back intercom and they do it all over fiber, which is crazy that it can just send all that, and including program feed or uh, clean feeds, whatever you want to send back and forth through here. And the way that does that is a du duplex fiber connection. And we have four of these on each venue, at each venue set up, and this all goes over the trunk cable. Um, the way that we have our cassettes set up is every camera, one through four, has an ATEM. So it'll go one, two, three, four are our cameras. And that's kind of how we started. You can kind of see because the last four fibers have kind of just grown into a lot more data over simplex connections versus these where it requires duplex. So the first two, four, six, eight fibers are taken up. And the last four, we have definitely gotten creative in the last year, I'd say, with how we send data. For instance, over one of these, we have an SDI converter in our trailer that takes four 1080p SDI connections and sends it over one simplex fiber. So that's four, so basically one through four is four cameras and now we have one fiber that sends four cameras, all separate SDI feeds back into the trailer. So that's just an instance of how fiber keeps improving day to day because something like this converter is kind of brand new that takes four SDI and now gives us one fiber that we can get all four cameras from. 
Um, and continuing on with different connections and fibers, these are basically, this is a rack mount, like if you'd have a uh, kind of a press box set up or fly rack, something like that. Um, this is more of an armored way to kind of protect your fiber, just with caps. Um, LC on this end, same thing with LC on the other end. Um, and I'll kind of let Ryan go into why it's important to always cover the fiber caps and what could happen if you don't. So let's look at why keeping a fiber clean is important. So as you can see on our connectors here, there are little rubber gaskets that go inside of these. So the main reason is, is because this is light in here and light needs to be able to travel through something. The minute that light can't travel through something, your data is instantly scrambled. So when you're looking at a fiber piece itself, especially, especially the cables, when you're looking at the cable itself, if you don't keep these clean, the cable becomes useless. So what happens is when this gets dirty right here, this is essentially the entire thing that handles all of those laser lights. The minute this is dirty, like I said, your data becomes scrambled and it's no longer usable. The most interesting thing about fibers, especially at such a small level like this, these are virtually wasteless to get fixed versus buying a new one. If you ever run into problems with your fiber cables, definitely try to get them recycled and then go buy new ones because of how tiny these strands are in here. The moment that they're dirty, you're gonna have to get a new cable. So either keep them clean or make sure you have someone you can get cables from. Yeah, and Ryan makes a good point about keeping the cables clean. And the one good thing about fiber is how cost effective it is. Like for instance, this cable is probably two or three dollars right here. And then you could keep going up. This is a 50 foot patch cable. Um, we'll kind of sometimes run this from our ATEM up in like main camera in the press box and kind of need, let's say drops down to the second floor. We'll just run one of these patch panels down through the window from the ATEM to where the cassette is at on the second floor below. And something like this 50 foot cable cost maybe six dollars a hundred foot one is maybe ten to twelve dollars so the cables themselves it's very cheap and it's definitely a route that at first when we were looking at this as soon as you mentioned the word fiber we were like oh that's going to cost a lot of money but as we've been using it the last couple of years it's definitely opened a lot of eyes and kind of like wow why haven't we been using this before um and same with the converters themselves i mean this hdmi to fiber converter um, I think maybe this runs on Amazon for $200 and that's kind of the cost of a black magic like SDI converter. By the time you'd send that over HDMI or SDI, you're looking at two or $300, same price or even more. So fiber definitely is cost effective and it's proven to be very useful in our productions here. So thanks for coming on this journey with us about learning how we use fiber in our solutions here. It has been a long four years of learning what we can and cannot do with fiber. And I can't wait to see where this technology takes us further. I mean, Jake, what are your thoughts on fiber? How do you like? It's kind of crazy when we first started this company and started looking at how we we're going to build a trailer and what we we're going to do. Everything that I was seeing was fiber, everything. So. It was definitely scary for us never using fiber to basically going to a complete fiber system uh, and relying on it. But it's like I said before, it's kind of proven to be very useful in every production that we do here. And we probably it saves so much extra hassle running cables because you're running one cable that sends all this data versus running uh, how many different Ethernets and XLRs and all that. So, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely a good thing. And. Like Ryan said, it's still improving every day. So who knows what, what's going to be out next year or two years before that so or after that. But um, yeah, if you have any other questions, drop them in the comments below and we'll, we'll try to get them as quick as we can. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.